fixed it. The Audi TT. I don't know what you can hear from those clips. Hopefully there's some sound. If not, I've recorded some on this to kind of show you guys. But as you can clearly tell, the TT is now working. I mean, it was working before. It wasn't really broken as such, but it, I really didn't want to drive it because the engine would have eventually probably gone, which is not something I really want. It's covered to survive if that was the case, but I would rather it not blow up. Anyway, so this is easily the cheapest car I've ever purchased in my life. And that is probably why there were a few issues with it. I mean, to be fair, it's a cheap car. The type of people that would buy this kind of car usually, not, not myself, usually wouldn't look at it very well. Honestly, I was thinking about this. I never thought about this before, but if you were buying a cheap car, like a Fiat 500, an old, older Fiat 500, that's had like loads, 100,000 miles, or a Vauxhall Corsa with 100,000 miles, you can 100% confirm that that thing has not been looked after at all this is the case with this it hasn't been properly looked at i mean it probably has been at some by, by a couple of owners but it's had about like nine people now which is quite a lot me and my friend dale did a few things with the tt over the weekend and that is now why it is like it is not just the filler cap i promise first started by doing the main things that need to be done for example dropping the sump we dropped the sump and Honestly, as we were expecting, the sump was clogged up, the pickup pipe was clogged up from absolute rubbish, from them not being changed or for it not being properly looked after service, that kind of thing. So we swapped out the sump pickup pipe and once we'd done that, we cleaned out the sump a little bit, put the sump back on after the, obviously we drained the oil before all of it. But that was honestly it, that was the main issue. It really didn't take too long, even though this car's really crusty underneath because it's a 100,000 mile car. That actually, it's, it's, if you cambered it, it a little, it, the holes don't quite line up. Do they not? No. <laughs> you could probably get tyres that thick for it, though, like the wheels that thick. Yeah, maybe. If you cambered it, it would fit. Hole there, just about to line up. That one's nowhere near. <laughs> Can't see that one or that one. Well, should we try the other Lexus wheels? Yeah. No. Ah. Oh, so we're stuck with the cruddy wheels for a while. Them. Same pattern on them. Is them. that? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> While waiting for oil to run through the system, that kind of thing, we thought, what else could we do? Well, we decided to start stripping down parts of this car to uh, weight reduce it. Now, we've taken out quite a bit of plastic at the back. As you can see, everything is exposed behind the seats. But lean the seat forward. All the bits of plastic from behind here have gone, except one really awkward bit that refused to come out. It's right there. And as you would have already seen, again, this vlog is going to be a mishmash of past and new clips. It's going to be a little bit hard to follow for some, but hopefully it turns out alright. I'm trying a different like style as such, but we ripped out basically everything from the trunk. There was an old CD player behind there, but basically you can see all the way through into the car now, which means it's also a little bit louder, which I kind of like.
sump has been removed and this is the new versus old. Now, the new pickup pipe is supposed to look like that. Well, it looks like that. And this is what the old one looks like. Absolutely disgusting. Thankfully, the sump isn't too bad, just needs a bit of a cleaning. But that would be why the engine is getting no oil. take too long at all and instantly the car sounded so much healthier with the new oil the new oil filter all that kind of stuff but I didn't want to just stop there and since we're doing a service on the oil I thought it made sense to do a service on pretty much everything else as well so we did fuel filter air filter pollen filter pretty much the general service stuff that you would do for a car we also changed the spark plugs and now that I've done all of that I don't know why I hadn't done it before on my own in the first place. It's generally quite easy. The RCF, for example, I'm not going to do most of that myself. I'm going to take it to a garage and they're going to do it because it's a modern car for one and that I want the stamps to make sure that it shows that it's been serviced or that kind of thing. Advantage of having a convertible is getting out like a Saints Row. The bad Saints Row, not not the good one. I don't think you could do it in Saints Row 2 and 1, which are the good I am tremendously happy with this car. It's honestly one of the most fun cars I've ever driven in my life. So I have driven some pretty exciting cars. There's just something about having a small car, and especially when it has no roof on. Am I an idiot for driving it in this weather? Yes, I am. With this car, that's all part of the fun. Like, this is a stupid car. It was really stupidly cheap. I'm gonna be stupid in it. I got so many people staring at me, and probably more people staring at me in this than I did in the RCF for the reason that I'm driving this in the snow. I mean, that I noticed anyway. I, I'm very, so I'm quite a socially awkward person. But again, this is one of the reasons I'm gonna be like, you know what, I don't care. This car is so much fun, and I don't care what you guys think. Honestly, the cool thing is, okay, some people were mentioning, I think Racer Beth mentioned this. Uh, the windows, I had them up in a picture when the convertible top was down. And people, I was always like, it's dumb when people do that, I don't quite understand it. It does, it helps a lot. The wind is completely different with the windows up. It should be something quite obvious, but at, at the time of when I saw the people do it, I was like, why would you do that? One annoying issue I'm running into with the car is, there's actually uh, a, the, the old stereo in here. I'm actually having issues with getting it to let me put the code in, because unfortunately I put the code in wrong twice, and... Now it's locked itself. <laughs> I want to make use of those both speakers. Oh, also the little window started working, which is very useful. Also helps us mount a GoPro on the back. But this does mean now we are at the next stage of the project car. It is working, it is running fine. We're going to be stripping out stuff as we find it. There's actually quite a lot behind the rear bumper apparently. But the next proper stage of this vehicle is actually starting to do things to it. Now, if you guys know of any cheap wheels, let us know. We're probably going to do callovers and wheels is one of the first things. It's a little bit floaty, but it's not as floaty as you'd think. I mean, obviously, my other two cars actually feel a little bit more floaty. This thing is pretty, pretty nice, actually. Hopefully, we're going to be getting an angle grinder at some point soon so we can cut away some of the useless metal that's on the vehicle. So again, reduce weight. I want to make this thing really light and stupid. I've driven the 2007 RS4, I think it was. This vehicle, actually, I find more fun than an RS4. Can you believe that? You probably don't. But I promise I'm telling the truth. I don't know why. It's just so small and you have so much room and there's like no blind spots whatsoever when the roof is down. That, in my, in my opinion, is reason enough to drive it in the cold with the roof down. I said, pretty much every time I'm going to drive this is with the roof down. That's the point of it. It's stupid. It's going to mostly stay in the garage. I'm cold. We should probably go inside. Thank you to those that are being so supportive about this idea. I mean, I think this is a very good project car because it's not slow. Uh, a lot of people are suggesting like hatchbacks or something. I really don't want a hatchback. I, I don't find them that exciting at all, unless I'm talking about like the Focus RS or something, which is, it's not, it's not too grand, I can tell you that. Let's face it, it was either this or an MX-5, and I think I personally found the right one for me. But this is where crunch time begins, cheap, 
mods, cheap upgrades, cheap everything. This thing is going to start being in bits uh, for the different reasons opposed to just having the, a service, for example. Uh, we needed to start with a service, it's, it's just common sense. That's why we did it. I know people are going to be like, you haven't run it yet, where's the... It needs to be sorted, it needs to run before we can do anything to it. Now it runs great. We can start driving and figuring out what needs to be upgraded and what I feel needs to be upgraded. For, for number one, I think the wheels is something I'm going to be looking at. It is quite expensive for wheels and tyres, but that is something we need because the two front wheels have slow punctures. I'm going to be looking, but if you guys come across any bargains in your local area on eBay, whatever, let me know. I'm willing to travel to try and find some decent wheels for this car on the cheap, but I have no idea what would match this car. So I think anything would suit this car. But I think that's going to about do for this video. Thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully you enjoyed this little bit different video and I'm actually showing you the driving of the TT. And I've got to say, as a, one of my absolute favorite cars, if not probably my second favorite car that I've owned so far. Which sounds pretty crazy, I know. I've had some much quicker cars, but there's just something about having no roof and having a pretty decently quick car. Be sure to smash like, subscribe if you are new, and I'll see you in the next vlog. Until next time, guys. Peace.